morning, good morning. It is your boy Jim Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is October 16th, 289 days that we've been reading the Bible together this year. 76 days to go. It's World Food Day, Global Cat Day, Department Store Day, National Feral Cat Day, and Steve Jobs Day. How about that? How about that? So, we are moving on in our reading to uh, first, not first John, John 1. John 1. We finished up Matthew yesterday, and we're moving on to the book of John. We're going to read the book of John in its entirety, and then we're going to move on. And I think you're going to see just the nature of the Gospels keeps us from doing a good job or appropriately like trying to find the right timeline and read it in chronological order like we did the Old Testament. We'll pick that back up as we get into Acts where we think the, the letters, Pauline letters and, and, and Peter's letters were written. We'll try and get it, get it right there. So anyhow, back, back to our reading. We're going to read John 1 and 2 today. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came as a witness that he might testify about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but was sent that he might testify about the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own and those who were his own didn't receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become God's children. To those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and lived among us. We saw his glory, such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him. He cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, for he was before me. From his fullness we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The one and only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. This is John's testimony, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He declared and didn't deny, but he declared, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said, therefore, to him, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Isaiah 40, verse 3. As Isaiah the prophet said, the ones who had sent, who had been sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you don't know. He is the one who comes after me, who is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. These things were done in Bethany, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I didn't know him, but for this reason I came baptizing in water, that he would be revealed to Israel." John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained on him. I didn't recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, On whomever you will see the Spirit descending and remaining on him is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God! The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. 
They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation Peter. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, Nathanael, and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said about him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. <laughs> Jesus answered him, Because I told you I saw you underneath the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Most certainly I tell you all, hereafter you will see heaven opened and the angels of God descending, or ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The third day there was a wedding in Cana, of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six water pots of stone set there after the Jews' way of purifying, containing two or three metrites apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the ruler of the feast. So they took it. When the ruler of the feast tasted the water, now become wine and didn't know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the ruler of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and when the guests guests have drunk freely, then that which is worse. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those who sold oxen, sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. He made a whip of cords and threw all out of the temple, both the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' money and overthrew their tables. To those who sold the doves, he said, Take these things out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will eat me up, in Psalm 69, 9. The Jews therefore answered him, What sign do you show us, seeing that you do these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews therefore said, it took 46 years to build this temple. Will you raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name, observing his signs, which he did. But Jesus didn't entrust himself to them because he knew everyone and because he didn't need for anyone to testify concerning man, for he himself knew what was in man. Let's pray. Father, thank you for keeping this word for us. Thank you for uh, your kindness and mercy. Thank you for um, sustaining it. Thank you for the different nature of it. And thank you for being good to us. And we pray that you, as we continue to journey along this road of reading your word, that you would make it clear, that you would make it evident, and that you would make it um, obvious to us, the things that you're trying to teach us. In, and have mercy on us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Yep, a little quicker. A little quicker just to read, just to read it today. And uh, show notes are at notmanynoble.com. And hit me up, notmanynoble at gmail.com if you want to send me an email, if you have a prayer request or anything like that. But yeah, a little quicker today. Let's be rock the boogie. Let's get in. Let's get out. Thank you for listening. And I will catch you tomorrow. Peace.